morning and coming. Okay, so now the next thing that we are going to look at is polysaccharides. What is polysaccharides? It started from the word poly. Poly uh, means possibly. many. When we said poly, it means many. So polysaccharides, it means there are polymers of many monosaccharides. So it means that in polysaccharide, you can have a thousands, like 20,000, 30,000, even 1 million monosaccharides joined together through glycosidic bonds. So it means that in polysaccharide, we are talking about thousands of monosaccharides that joined together to produce the polysaccharides. And the properties of these monosaccharides, they are not sweet in test. So they are not sweets and they do not exhibit reducing properties of aldehyde or keto growth. So they are, all of them, they are non-reducing sugar and they are divided into two. We have two types of polysaccharides. We have homopolysaccharides and we have heteropolysaccharides. So in the case of homopolysaccharides, it means that it's a single kind of monosaccharide that joins together to produce the polymer. And examples of this homopolysaccharide, we have starch, we have glycogen and cellulose. Starch, glycogen, and cellulose are all form, are all formed by a single monosaccharide. And this single monosaccharide is glucose. So it's a refitting unit, it's a refitting unit of the glucose that make the homopolysaccharide. It means the same repeating unit. You are using the same repeating unit to produce the homopolysaccharide. And examples, as I said, we have starch, glycogen, and cellulose. So all these starch, glycogen, and cellulose are made by thousand, by thousand of glucose. So it means that they are the same monosaccharide that form them. Then we have heteropolysaccharides. So in the case of heteropolysaccharides, is or are composed of two or more different monosaccharides. So are different monosaccharides that join together to produce heteropolysaccharides. An example of this heteropolysaccharides, we have hyaluronic acid, we have chondroitin sulfates. This hyaluronic acid is a heteropolysaccharide that usually found on some cells and tissue. Like for example, we have these hyaluronic acids on the surface or on the shell of the egg of women that is in the ova. The egg of the woman is covered by this hyaluronic acid. So most of the infertility case, most of the infertility of case, most of the infertility case of some women is actually as a result of inability of the sperm cell to break open this hyaluronic acid. Because remember, for the fertilization to take place, the sperm cell must be penetrated, must pass through the shell or through the membrane or the zona pellucida of the egg cell and then fuse itself with the nucleus of the egg cell. So that is why in the sperm cell of men, there is an enzyme called hyaluronidase. And that enzyme, hyaluronidase, is responsible for the breaking and the removal of this hyaluronic acid on the egg. So some of the men, they are infertile because they don't have active form of that hyaluronidase enzymes. And as a result of that, they can, the sperm cell cannot penetrate into their egg cell or into the egg cell of the woman. So as a result of that, the fertility is not possible. So this hyaluronic acid is an example of heteropolysaccharides. So now the next thing that we are going to look at is the different types of these homopolysaccharides. Excuse me, sir. No, you ask special later. Excuse me, sir. You ask later. 
So example of homopolysaccharides, we have starch, dextrin, glycogen, cellulose, inulin, and dextrans. All these are examples of homopolysaccharides. So now we are starting with starch. Starch is a polysaccharide of glucose. It means that the building block of this starch is glucose. So it's the glucose that make up the starch and it occurs in cereals such as wheat, rice, corn, and barley, and potatoes, legumes, seeds, nuts. And usually it is in a storage form in plants. So plant stored excess, plant stored excess, excess glucose in them in the form of starch. And then the next thing now, we are going to look at the structure of this glucose. So starch is composed of amylose and amylopectin. Starch is made or, or is composed of amylose and amylopectin. What is amylose? We are starting with amylose. Amylose is soluble in hot water. It is soluble in hot water and it occurs to the extent of 15 to 20% in starch molecules. It means that 15 to 20% of starch in plant are in the form of amylose. So amylose is made up of 15 to 20%. It's made up of 20, sorry, 15 to 20% of the starch. And it is a polymer of about 200 to 1,000 alpha D glucose molecules. So it means that about 200 to 1,000 alpha D glucose molecules is what actually united using alpha 1 poor glycosidic bond. It means that in amylose, the, the, the linkage is through alpha 1 poor glycosidic bond. So that is why it is also equally important. It is equally important to know that the types of bond that exists between all these types of the saccharide compounds. And one very interesting thing that you should know, amylose, it is an on branch. It is on branch long chain. It is on branch, it doesn't have branch. Then it gives blue color with iodine. So if you have amylose and you add iodine, if the iodine is present, in a particular solution, then the presence of amylose, if you want to test, assuming now you have four different test tool and you ask to check whether you have amylose or not, what you do, then you add iodine. Then if you observe blue color, it tells you that amylose is present and the molecular weight of this amylose is around 400,000 Dalton or more. That is the molecular weight. And then the next thing now is amylopectin. Amylopectin, it is insoluble in hot water. It occurs to the extent of 80 to 85% in starch molecules. It means that 80 to 85% of starch molecules is made up of the amylopectin. And it is a polymer of 100 of chain of alpha D glucose molecules united with alpha one poor glycosidic bond, which are joined like the branches of three by alpha one cis glycosidic linkage at branching point. So this is to tell you that amylopectin it form branch and the linear form it's also formed through alpha one poor glycosidic linkage is the same thing, but it also form a branch and the branch is usually formed at alpha one cis glycosidic bond. So if you ask the kind of the branch, the branch, the linkage that are found in the branch of amylopectin is through alpha one cis glycosidic linkage. It forms a branch structure and is similar to glycogen. So it forms a branch, the amylopectin, it forms a branch and it gives violet color with iodine. So you see amylopectin form violet color 
while amylose form glue. And amylopectin is insoluble, while amylose is soluble. Sorry, is soluble in hot water. And the percentage of amylose is 15 to 20% of the total starch, and then 80 to 85% of the total starch of the total starch is amylopectin. It forms a gel in hot water. Okay. So this is how it looks like in the form of amylose. It is just a linear. But in the case of amylopectin, if you look at it, it forms a branch. Look at it. This is at this point, at this point here, you can see that this is alpha, this is alpha wampo, and this is also alpha wampo. That is for the linear. Then for the branch, this is alpha 1, 6. This is carbon 6, and this is carbon 1. This is carbon 6, and this is carbon 1. So it forms alpha 1, 6 glycosidic branch at the branching point. That is for the amylose. So it's very important to know the difference between amylose and amylopectin. So this is also amylose and this is amylopectin, another structure. So ladies and gentlemen, this is where my slide ended. And I think this is where we are going to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have question, you can ask. Thank you.